Hello there, I'm Dr. Ara Jigmajan with Prime Coral. Now we have a monopora, and the edge of this monopora started to die off with tissue loss. So we're going to take this coral, and I can't see anything actually there. I don't see any parasites or predators that I can see with my eyes. So we're going to take this coral and see what we can see with the microscope. And the key is to, to look under the microscope because what's killing this coral, and this is RTN, is actually a microscopic parasite called Philaster. And Philaster is responsible for essentially all coral RTN that happens spontaneously without any major changes in the water chemistry or physical parameters of water. So let's see what we see with the microscope. Now here's the border and immediately at 40x magnification you can actually see there's some activity going on here microscopically. Now you can't see these with your naked eye, but these are philaster. This is, philaster is basically a type of protozoan, and there are four types of microorganisms in the world. There are fungi, bacteria, viruses, and protozoans. And what's killing corals and causing all RTN in nature, out in the reefs, and in our aquariums are these microscopic protozoan parasites and they are transmitted from coral to coral as an infection. And what we're seeing that's wiping out the Great Barrier Reefs, the Caribbean Reefs, the Indonesian Reefs are these parasites and they're very good swimmers. So they'll come in and they'll eat a coral and kill it. And what we see with our eyes is RTM. But what's actually happening microscopically is that they are eating the coral tissue to get to the zooxanthella. They feast on zooxanthella, that's what they live off of, is coral tissue and zooxanthella. If you look at their bodies microscopically, you're going to see that they're absolutely full of zooxanthella. So what they do is they go ahead and land on the coral, they start to um, eat, and they reproduce. And they reproduce very quickly. They reproduce through asexual reproduction, basically splitting into two, and they can also reproduce through a technique called internal budding. And with internal budding, basically one organism can make hundreds of baby organisms, small versions of itself. Now these, organ these creatures can also reproduce sexually, so there's an opportunity to have genetic variation and adapt to their environment. I believe these are what have been eating coral for millions of years. They're highly adapted to eating coral. Hopefully you can appreciate them on this video. We're going to go ahead and go to a 100x view. All right, and there they are literally thousands and thousands of these microorganisms. They're ciliated protozoan parasites and basically they're eating the coral. The little dots you're seeing here are zooxanthella, individual dots, and what's moving are philaster. And the philaster are what are causing the RTN of corals. I am the very first scientist in the world to make this announcement. I have proven it over four months ago in Prime Coral Labs where I used coaches postulates and proved them by isolating this organism from RTN coral and culturing it and then reintroducing it into healthy coral samples and the healthy corals became infected and they demonstrated rapid tissue necrosis themselves and then I re-isolated the philaster from the RTNing corals that used to be healthy and prove that it was the same organism. So I've gone through all four coaches postulates. I've done it hundreds of times now. And um, I've made the announcement. Most people find it hard to believe that this is what's causing RTN. 
and that it's an infection, but you can see how aggressive these organisms are. And once again, the area of the coral where the RTN is going on, and literally there are probably 3,000 um, of these ciliated protozoans, the philasters, right here in this very small uh, corner of the coral. Just a little edge right here. Probably no more than the surface area of a dime. Now that we've made the diagnosis of RTN on our coral, and we know the cause is Philaster lucinda and Philaster glomens, we know the only treatment in the world that works is prime coral stop RTN coral dip and prime coral prevent RTN in tank treatment. So what I do is I'll take a quarter of a gallon of tank water, which is a thousand mils, and I'm gonna add four milliliters of prime coral dip. That's the prime coral stop RTN and coral dip. Next, I'm gonna mix it up and we're gonna dip our coral for five minutes. And while we're dipping it, we're gonna lavage or irrigate the coral. So we're taking our monopora. Remember, the monopora has a little edge right here that started to RTN about eight hours ago and it's already lost a significant amount of tissue. We're putting it into the dip and we're gonna basically irrigate it for the next five to seven minutes. For this type of situation, I would usually go with an SPS around six, seven minutes. I think it's safe in the dip and you wanna just go ahead and irrigate that edge of the coral as well as, as well as the entire coral to kill all of the philaster. And while my coral is in the prime coral stop RTN dip, I actually like to just gently pour the dip solution over the coral repetitively for about six minutes. That way you're kind of blasting off the tissue that's dying and you're getting underneath the mucus on the coral so that the parasites get the full exposure of the medication. Again, this is the prime coral stop RTN coral dip. It's the only treatment that's actually effective at eliminating the parasites off of your coral that's RTNing or STNing. The other thing I like to do is use a turkey baster and just really blast the area of the coral where the RTN is. That way you're getting the mucus off of the coral and getting underneath the mucus and the dead tissue to make sure that the philaster is getting exposed to the medication during the treatment. This can be done by actually picking up the coral itself and making sure that you shoot a jet of this dip right onto the coral tissue. All right, let's take this coral that we've just irrigated and get it back under the microscope. And see what our dip did. All right, you can immediately see there's skeleton. Here's the coral tissue, here's the border, and you really don't see very many of the parasites left. So prior to the dip, 
There were thousands of the Philaster RTN parasites, and now you see that about 95% of them are gone. There's still a few left. The dip won't kill every single parasite with one dip. You're gonna have to probably do three or four of these. Yep. So you can see where there were thousands, there's now only a few left. We've gotten rid of about 98% of them with one dip along with the irrigation. And you can see the edge of the coral tissue here that was getting eaten by the philaster. So I would put this coral into isolation and tomorrow we'll do another treatment with the dip. But for now with one dip, six minutes, and with irrigating the surface that's RTNing, we're able to get away with, get rid of 98% of the RTN parasites with the Prime Coral Stop RTN dip. Again, that's Prime Coral Stop RTN. It's the only treatment available that kills these parasites off your coral that cause RTN.